Mark, when you were first creating Space Command, was it in your mind that you were going to attempt to sell it to a studio? It's very interesting. Uh, you know, when I started in television, I've, I've, been, I've been a professional writer since I was 19. I sold, well, actually, in truth, my first radio play aired when I was 18 on KPFK. My first short story I sold when I was 19. Um, I wrote, started writing my first book when I was 22, The Twilight Zone Companion, and I was writing for television by the time I was 22 or 23. And uh, when I started in television, if you wanted your work to reach millions of people, it had to be through a studio and a network. And there were only three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS, and also PBS, you know, public television. And that was it. And uh, so now, and also you had to shoot on 35 millimeter or 16, and you edited on a moviola, and it, was, it cost millions of dollars to make any television program per episode. Now, of course, it's very, very different. You can shoot on a digital camera. We own a RED. And uh, you, you edit on a laptop. Our editor is back at our place right now editing Space Command on our, on our laptop, and it's hooked up to our big screen TV. And, uh, and, and you can reach out to your audience. Your audience can help finance what you're doing. And you can also reach, reach millions of people via the internet. So, you know, a lot of people stay stuck in the way things used to be, and I think that's a big mistake. I embrace the new model, and I love the new model, and I love the direct communication with my audience. I feel that I, I'm the same as my audience, and so if I like something, if I'm enthusiastic about something, I know my audience will be too. And, uh, and so with Space Command, uh, initially my idea was, I, it's funny, when I first came up with the idea of doing a hopeful vision of the future, it's this multi-generational saga that covers 150 years in the future, it takes place in the solar system and beyond, and um, a lot of my friends run network shows. And a number of them said to me, well, you know, listen, we can team up and we can walk this into a network and get a pilot deal. But, but I knew from experience that if I sold it, and it probably would sell, I'd be hired to write the script, and then the network could cut it off its script, and then they would own it. No one would ever see it. Or they could green light it to production of the pilot, and then we'd shoot the pilot. And if they didn't green light it to series, again, no one would ever see it. Or if they, uh, you know, green it to series, they might have notes that would screw it up and ruin it. So... <laughs> So I thought, well, no, let me see if I can raise money. I'd never raised money before, but I said, let's, let's see if I can reach out to the audience. I mentor thousands of young people in Hollywood, well, actually people of all ages, uh, via the roundtable I run and the classes I teach, and I'd been hearing about crowdfunding, and so I thought, well, let's see if I could do that. So um, our target was $75,000 uh, to raise in two months. We hit that in three days, and we kept going, and we raised $221,000. And then I sold investment shares to my backers and raised another half million. And we're still going strong. And uh, so that was enough to open our own studio, shoot the first two hours of Space Command, shoot 30 minutes of the second two hours. I've written the first eight hours and outlined hours nine through 12. So that's a season. So then the question is, well, do I want to take it to a network? Do I, is there a reason to take it to a network if you've gotten this much of a head of steam? There are f over 500 scripted comedies and dramas on all the various networks and platforms now, 500 series. The cost of rolling out a show, promoting it, just so people know it exists, is $23 million. I can raise enough money to make Space Command. I can't raise enough money to promote Space Command. <laughs> so, so that's where a studio and a network, or more ideally, more specifically, a network or big platform like Netflix or Amazon makes sense. Because if I really want to reach a world audience on a broad scale, if I want this to really last and, and reach the people I want to reach, that makes a lot of sense. And the, the, the fact of the matter is that he started out wondering if it would be a single film. And what happened was once he started with the crowdfunding, something that we hadn't seen as um, an aspect of crowdfunding wasn't just gathering money to shoot something, but it was gathering awareness worldwide. Yes. And that awareness threw us, because we're both soft bunny people, and we said, maybe a few other people are really down on this dark trend and we'll want to see something that's hopeful, a hopeful vision of the future. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the outpouring was so great, that's what uh, ignited this crazy ambition in this yeah. mad well, person. Yeah, yes. and, uh, and it started to, to grow and grow and grow. And he said, well, maybe two, maybe three. And so although it started as a single, it became it a much larger story right. and uh, became, you know, well, how about ongoingly? And uh, we've had investors just walk up to him and say, I invested in this because I wanted to some, see something that gave me hope. Yes. Specifically. Yeah. And so we realized that something that was troubling to us was profoundly troubling to vast numbers all across the globe. Well, you know, it's funny because during our Space Command uh, campaign, um, I got a phone call. And it turns out that there's a real Space Command. It's the space-going arm of the United States Air Force. 
And they called me, a major in, in the Air Force called me. I thought, oh gosh, they're either going to want to shut me down or <laughs> have me change the name. And I got on phone, the phone with, 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 with uh, Major Glenn Roberts of the U.S. Air Force. He says, we love what you're doing. We, 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 we want to be part of it. Great. Oh so, but the funny part is during our campaign, if you typed Space Command into Google, we came in first and the Air Force came in second. And even to this day, if you type in Space Command, the Air Force comes in first and we come in second even still. So millions of people around the world know about Space Command. Thousands gave us money, and, um, which is very, very heartening. But yes, as Elaine was saying, originally it was going to be one two-hour story, and I actually wrote half of it before the campaign and then immediately sat down afterwards and wrote the, the second half of that two-hour script. But because I was doing media interviews every single day of the campaign, as I talked about Space Command, the story started to grow in my mind. And it, as Elaine said, it grew to, from two hours to four hours to six hours to eight hours, and finally it was a whole series. And so I, when I sat down and wrote the first, so what had, was originally going to be the first two hours ultimately became the fourth story, the fourth two-hour story. And so I sat down and wrote the other scripts. So the, f the first ones, the first, the, so I've written four, uh, four of the two-hour scripts already. And, uh, and what was going to be the first one is now going to be the fourth one. So if you ever go back to our original Kickstarter campaign, the actors I'm talking about as being in Space Command actually now are in that fourth one. So it's Armin Shimmerman from Deep Space Nine and Buffy, Christina Moses who just starred in Containment, Ethan Phillips from Star Trek, Voyager, etc. So um, It's sort of like a loose torrent and he sweeps more and more people fun. along in his yes. way. Yeah. Well, the lovely thing is that all the actors I approached, um, uh, many of them stars from shows I'd worked on, said yes. And so, I mean, my friend Mark, Mike Harney from Orange is the New Black and Doug Jones who starred in Pan's Labyrinth and Hellboy and The Strain. He's going to be starring in the new Star Trek TV show, Star Trek Discovery, and Mira Furlan from Babylon 5 and Lost and Bill Mooney from Babylon 5 and Lost in Space and uh, Bob Picardo from Star Trek Voyager and Stargate, Stargate Atlantis. These are wonderful actors. James Hong, who was in Blade Runner and Big Trouble in Little China. He's one of my heroes. He's phenomenal to work with. And Ferran Tahir, who was in... J.J. Abrams' Star Trek movie and Iron Man and, you know, Elysium. I mean, these are phenomenal actors, and, um, and I'm honored to be working with them. It's just, it's just such a joy.